Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports and their pick'em game. Sign up now with Code Poodle to claim your special pick plus a first time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another College Football 25 video and today I'm going to be going over the easiest ways to recruit players in College Football 25. Before we get into the video, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and if you haven't already, check out Underdog. If you use code Poodle, you can get your first deposit matched up to $250. First tip in this video is going to be the coach type you choose. It is so important that you choose a recruiter if you are trying to improve the process by which you recruit. It is going to give you access to packages and points and stuff that you can spend towards recruiting versus tactician or motivator, which applies to other aspects of the game which are helpful, but it's not recruiting. So make sure you do choose the recruiting archetype. The next important thing here is that when you create a custom coach, you can choose your pipeline. There's so many, there's bad ones, there's great ones. It would take forever to go through this. The best thing I could recommend is look where a lot of the recruits come from. You can scroll through some creative leagues, look at where some of these come from, look at what some of the other top programs like Georgia or Alabama do choose from. And you could probably just go through there and get an idea for where the best one for you is. There's two ways to go about this. You could take one where a lot of the recruits come from, although you may have more competition, or you could choose one where a lot of people don't have pipeline to see if you can kind of be individualized. But that is very complex. It is very much up to you on which one you choose. To start the recruiting process, my best advice I can give you is sort by recommended. Now, for 90% of people, this will probably work. For very, very, very advanced recruiters who know what they're doing, you can stray from this. But for the bulk of people, especially people who haven't played this game in over a decade, people who haven't played even NCAA 14 ever, this is going to be something you really want to focus on. Recommended kind of lines it up for you in terms of interest of your school, where you stand, what your likelihood is, your rate pipeline rating. It's important that you look at all factors here when all things are considered, but if you don't want to get into the nitty gritty, the best thing I could offer is look at the right hand side, right above my face cam where you see the influence, see where you stand always. The easiest way to recruit is to recruit who wants to go to your school. Getting into fights with other teams that you have no chance or little to no chance is going to be very problematic because there's just too many programs in this game that could just beat you. For instance, if Georgia wants a player, you're probably not getting them unless you're a Bama, unless you're an LSU, a Penn State, a Michigan, unless you're a top program that can try to compete and you have the pipeline and you have the interest. Other than that, with all things being considered equal, you're probably not getting them. So if we take it out of recommended, if we just go to any state and we search by this and we go to right here, five-star Fowler, He's from Bronx, New York. I am nowhere near the top. I am 10th. Ohio State has a lead on them. The odds of me sneaking in on this isn't impossible, but it's low. And you'll notice as you go on down, you'll see varying interest rates. So when they are more things considered even like this guy, Bankston, you could probably fight a little bit. I have to see where I stand, but they're all equal. No one has a massive lead, but there's some guys that you'll go to and you'll just know that people off rip have a bigger lead than others. And those are going to be the impossible ones. I highly, highly recommend you focus on all these influence factors prior to setting your scout board, prior to setting your recruitments, prior to setting up scholarships. Doing this will mean that you efficiently use your hours and your scholarships effectively because obviously LSU is a bigger program. You're getting 1100 hours. So you could scout more. You can kind of take a bunch of gambles. As a lower program, you won't be able to do that. So you do not want to be wasting hours. So first things first, definitely go through your recommended, sit through there. Honestly, you can add quite a few of them while you scout as a bigger school. There's plenty of guys here. There's plenty of four or five stars. I would recommend you round out your board always with your recommended because the difference between a great class, a good class and a bad class is you no know, one five star and like two four stars and no three stars, no two stars. Isn't that great of a class? Although you got a five star, you definitely need all those four stars. You need those three stars. You maybe need a few two stars just to round out your team because there is a future aspect here as well. So doing recommendeds pretty much gives you a leg up on everyone else. Like that, that gives you a leg up in the recruiting process. You're ready. You're ready starting ahead. It should be rather simple as long as you know how to recruit. And I will be making a video going over a recruiting guide where I go more in depth on the actual recruiting process. This is mainly to give you guys the tips that provide you the leg up. This gives you the advantage when everything's considered equal, right? So that's the first thing. Next thing is going to be coming over to coach abilities like I did reference earlier. So if you go on here, as you see, there's recruiter, there's strategist, tactician, architect, motivator, and there's talent developer. For the sake of this video, you can ignore program builder and CEO. Those won't apply to most people. And even if they do, in terms of strict recruiting right now, let's, we're going to stick with the recruiter tab. So when you go into recruiter, this is the one that you're starting with. You can unlock the other ones, but you do have an arrow pointing in that direction because you did start there. So when you go in here, this is the benefit of having the recruiter tab available to you and starting as a recruiter. 
advanced look QB, advanced look RB, wide receiver tight end. This goes on the whole way, as you see, for every single position. And at the bottom here, you have lasting impression. So this is the elite recruiter tab, which is not available until you complete some requirements. So let's start with the top. Quarterbacks take less time to fully scout. So this tab ties back to the first part. Before setting your scout board, not only do you want to look at recommended, you want to look at what prospects you see. So let's say there's a top five-star QB and a top five-star right tackle. You'd want to come here in year one, ideally, or any year you're playing and come in here and you want to start upgrading your QB advanced look. And then you want to go over to tackle and do the same thing on offensive linemen because that will give you another leg up there. So you kind of want to take this year by year. Let's say in year two, you're playing and you have quarterback and lot lineman maxed out. But in year two, your recommended tab shows you a five-star wide receiver and tight end. You may want to go upgrade that one now because it does give you more bang for your buck. Now, one other thing you want to keep in mind is that some position groups do if impact more players. So for instance, quarterback only impacts quarterback. Offensive line impacts five positions that you're going to need to recruit. So you actually do get a lot more bang for your buck doing this one first. And this is saying that all things are equal. You open the season up. There's no big player you want. If you're just trying to maximize points, it may make the most sense just to do blocking a line first, to do D line first, linebackers. That's going to give you multiple positions that you're going to get a leg up on versus just one. Although quarterback is the most important, it's all about how you want to build out your program. Once you get through these, something you do want to take a uh, look at throughout the future is that the unlock requirements for the elite recruiting tab, which is also very helpful because this increases interest, school grades impact higher, better bonus on pipelines, and ideal pitch grades. You do need to sign two top five recruiting classes and spend 50 in recruiter. I'll get to the spending part, but for the meantime, sign two top recruiting classes. This is where the future comes into play. So there's a few things to keep in mind. You only can get to level 50 as a coach and you only have a limited amount of points to spend. So you can't ever get to a point where every single coaching package is completely full. Your whole, your whole chart's full. So you don't want to just go spending. This is what I meant by, okay, you see a quarterback you want in this class and that's all you really see. And there's nothing else crazy that you really need. Maybe just do the quarterback and the offensive lineman. Don't go ahead and just do kickers because you have some extra points. And why not? Because you might get to a point where you're level 49 and your final two packages that you can get a point, you want it for something else, and now you can't go back. You can't respect, so be very specific when doing the recruiter function here. With all that being said, sign two top five recruiting classes means you won't be able to complete this for at least two seasons, pro probably, possibly more, right? So definitely be very vigilant with how you spend things. The next part of recruiting here that's a benefit that you can kind of get to get a leg up is these do stack in the sense that A, your coordinators can be an elite recruiter as well as your defensive coordinator, right? Your offensive and defensive coordinator. So make sure that you're aligning your coordinators properly. So in terms of this video for recruiting, make sure you're getting recruiters who lean heavily towards recruiting and strategists, right? Now, here's the thing. Strategist also plays a role in recruiting. It's not just straight recruiter. You're going to need strategists here to help a little bit as well. It gives you boost for complimentary visits. It gives you boost for visits. It gives you bonus interest for every quarter visit a quarterback is taken before visiting you. And it also gives you the mind reader ability, which can eventually give you a chance to see a dev trait during a visit. These are very important and these are recruiting based. So you definitely want these. Now to unlock strategists, you are going to go have to go ahead and win four bowl games and spend in tactician. So if you go to a new coach, you'll see right here, win four bowl games and spend 25 in tactician and recruiter. So again, there goes 10 point, 15 points you have to spend to unlock this. 10 points to unlock this and then points to spend in there. So you do have to be very vigilant with your points, which was my point before. So sum it up there, right? You want to look at recommended players first in your, in your board, see what positions you want to tackle, then come over to recruiter and purchase or focus on packages that impact this year's class, the players you want to tackle in this year and every year, so on and so forth. And year two, if it flips up, make sure you're flipping it that way. And also, even if it does flip up, it may be worth saving points because you don't know down the line what you may or may not need. So and my best advice is to kind of figure out what your program is going to be like. I'm LSU. I always want a quarterback and a wide receiver. I'm doing those for sure. The trenches are important. You're going to have to sacrifice in one spot. You probably can't get everything, but know that recruiter, strategist, and tactician will have to be open for you to really get up there. And as you move on up, some other bonuses and benefits you can acquire, which again are very hard, is if you go into program builder, if you get up to that, which does require five playoff game wins, you will see that there are a few things here that you can get, such as earn additional XP, upgrade your school's pipelines, boost your primary pipeline, and a few other things here as well. While they're great, not everyone's going to get to them. They are beneficial and will give you a leg up. 
And the final one is CEO. Now, CEO, incredibly hard. Two national championships is going to be impossible for a lot of people, but unless you're playing offline. But what's beneficial here, if you go on down, there's a chance at instant committability. So pretty much if there's a player that's interested in your school and you could, and you offer them a scholarship, they may just instantly commit, which would be awesome to lock in like players right off the rip. And then also discount coach abilities when another coach has the same ability. There are some other stuff that help here, but these aren't going to apply to everyone, although do definitely keep them in mind for the long haul, which also goes back to spending points in other places. Now, this video was mainly the easiest ways to recruit players, going through packages, strategies, and other ways to really just give you a leg up when all things are equal. I will briefly touch on this in terms of points as well, because this does play a role. Every hour varies based on what program you are. So if you're a one star, two star, three star, four star, five star, you don't all have the same hours. So it's all very circumstantial to your team. Always see how many hours you have. Do some basic math, pen and paper, see how much you have, what you can spend. If you're a low program and you're scouting, make sure to scout maybe a little riskier in the sense of kind of guess versus a five star that can check. Just be very careful with your points, be maximizing and make sure when you're offering these guys that you have a leg up on, such as this guy, Doga, because you're in their pipeline, make sure you look at that accordingly. If you have a huge lead, maybe dial back. If you have a small lead, stay full steam ahead. Of course, I'm probably going to be dropping a all recruiting type guide video at some point, which will go into everything. But I am trying to break this down because for the most part, I've noticed it's very, it's very in depth, right? You have a full guide. There's a lot in there. I'd rather break it up by the best strategies, then go into how to scout, then go into how to recruit specifically. So that's probably where I'm going with this. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. I will make a video at some point going over the best ways to scout, the best ways to recruit, the best ways to follow through the process. But for this time, I was really just focusing on the packaging and the tips and the other ways to give you a leg up on your competition. That's about it for the video. If you have any questions that require some more details that maybe you can get out in the comments, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and that's all. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.